Well, hello, xenographers everywhere, and welcome to another episode. We've talked a lot on this channel about adapting vintage lenses to full-frame mirrorless cameras. So today I thought we'd talk a little bit about some of the best vintage lenses for the Micro Four Thirds system. I'd like to thank everybody who watches these videos and who subscribes to this channel. It makes it much easier for me to keep making these videos. And so if you enjoy the channel, please do like and subscribe. Right, let's get the old chestnuts about the Micro Four Thirds system out of the way first. The first of which is Micro Four Thirds cameras can't do shallow depth of field. That isn't true, and anyone who says it is has drunk too much gin before breakfast. But it is more difficult. The accepted rule is that you lose two stops of shallow depth of field for any given lens when compared to the same lens on full frame. So for example, if you have a full frame lens on a micro four thirds body and it's set to f2, that gives effectively the same shallow depth of field as f3.5 would on a full frame sensor. The second old chestnut, there's more noise on micro four thirds images. Well, that's true. There's nothing you can do, it's just inherent in the system. My advice for that would be to shoot below ISO 800. There are advantages and disadvantages in using vintage glass on the Micro Four Thirds system. Most vintage lenses were designed for what we now know as full frame, the size of a 35mm negative. So let's have a look at what those advantages and disadvantages are so we know what we're dealing with. So when you mount a vintage lens on a micro four thirds body, the sensor sees only through the central portion of the lens. So that means that any small flaws in the central bit of your lens are going to be exaggerated and more clearly visible. That can be an advantage too because Vintage lenses lose sharpness around their edges and the Micro Four Thirds sensor doesn't see through the edges of a lens. So in theory, you should get a sharper, higher quality image. Now, when you're using vintage glass on Micro Four Thirds, the effective focal length of any lens that you use is doubled. That means each lens has greater reach. So it's a lot easier to get a long lens and rather harder to get a wide angle lens. The full frame equivalent of 35 millimeters on a micro four thirds system would be 17 millimeters. The full frame equivalent of a 24 mil on a micro four thirds body, you would need a 12 millimeter lens. So when we get to those sorts of widths, even vintage glass starts to become very expensive indeed. Also, the minimum focus distance of any lens is effectively halved, so you can get much closer to your subject. And that means that even rangefinder lenses, certainly the older ones that we look at on this channel, the Jupiters, uh, the Indostars, the Lights lens, they become much more usable because instead of focusing only at three feet, they'll focus down to effectively 1.5 feet. Generally, vintage glass is much cheaper than new glass. You can get a huge range of lenses. There are literally thousands to choose from, often at very cheap prices. That's why I use vintage glass on a micro four thirds sensor. So let's have a look at our first lens and the one I've chosen is the Olympus Zuiko 28 millimeters. Now, 28 multiplied by two is 56. So on a micro four thirds body, that gives pretty much the equivalent of a 50 millimeter lens on a full frame body. So this lens will function as a standard lens on micro four thirds. This lens is very sharp and it's very well made. It's all metal. 
its effective minimum focus distance on a micro four thirds body is 15 centimeters. So you really can get very close indeed to your subject. It's an f3.5 lens, so it's the equivalent of f5 on micro four thirds. It will give you some background blur, sure, and that blur is of a very nice quality. But with this lens, to achieve it, the closer you are, the better. It's not a natural background blur bokeh monster. It's a really nice lens. It's very light and it's very small. And the focusing throw is about a third of a turn. So it's really easy and simple to use. It's a great looking lens and it does sit nicely on a micro four thirds body, even with an adapter. And it will give you some beautiful images. The Zuiko lenses are fantastic at rendering colour. They're very sharp and this one's no exception. It's not quite the same as using a 50mm lens on a full frame camera. It gives you the same field of view, but it doesn't give you quite as much blur. However, if you're creative with your technique, you can get a fair bit of blur and it's of a very nice, soft, gentle quality. This is a great little lens. I've found it very usable on a micro four thirds body. And as you can see, it gives some beautiful results. I'm a fan of Zwicko lenses, but pretty much any vintage lens of similar focal length, whether it's a 24 or a 28, is going to give you similar results to those you see here. So the next lenses we're going to look at are 50 millimeter focal length lenses when mounted on a full frame body. So that means that when you put them on a micro four thirds body, they're equivalent to a hundred millimeter lens. The first one's the Zwicko F 1.4 and on a micro four thirds body, the maximum aperture is equivalent to F 2.8. Now, when you're shooting wide open at f1.4, it's rather tricky to get the correct focus using this lens. On the Sony a7, it's no problem. You've got focus peaking. Unfortunately, on the Panasonic GH2, which is the only micro four thirds body I have, there is no focus peaking. So because your depth of field is so very thin, especially when you're close to your subject, really focus peaking is vital. But if you nail that focus, this lens will give you some genuinely beautiful shots. The minimum focus distance is an effective 21 centimeters. So you can get very close to your subjects. And that is of course, one of the advantages of using full frame lenses on a four thirds body. It's a very, very well made lens. It's all metal. It renders colors beautifully and the quality of that background blur is so soft, so delicate. This lens has one of the nicest quality of background blur that I know. It's fantastic in low light. If you open up that aperture, you really can carry on shooting well after darkness has fallen. I must admit though, I was very surprised to discover that there are some really bad reflections of either the sensor or the adapter or perhaps even the rear element of the lens itself. I've never noticed these on the GH2 body before. I've never seen them on any other lens, whether vintage or modern. So perhaps this is something to do with this particular lens or we may be getting reflections off the adapter that I've used to take these shots. It was a very cheap adapter and I think there may be some bright spots inside it. That apart, this lens really works beautifully on a micro four thirds body. I personally very much like the 100 mil focal length, which this lens becomes when you're using it on a small sensor body. And it's a really versatile length. It's a little bit longer than 50 mil, so it gives you that bit of extra reach, but it's not so long that you need to move a long way back from your subject. 
I'm very impressed with the images it makes and I think this is a great lens for a micro four thirds system. I've also tested another 50mm lens on this body and that's the Lights 50mm Summitar F2. This is a stunning lens. It must have been made with magic by magicians. It's got such beautiful colour and background blur and I mounted it on the camera immediately after using the Zuiko 50mm and my goodness was I surprised at the difference. The colours of the lights lens are just beautiful. It's much nicer than the Zuiko in this respect. The quality of the background blur has a magic that the Zuiko, despite its out of focus softness, just doesn't seem to have. This lens works really well on this body. The minimum focus distance is effectively 50 centimeters, so it's made much more useful on this body, usually on a full frame camera or on a film range finder, the minimum focus distance is one meter. And that's fine, but there are many occasions when I've been using it, when I've wished I could have got just that bit closer. Using it on the Micro Four Thirds system, you can. It's an F2 lens on full frame, so effectively on Micro Four Thirds, it's an F3.5 lens, at least in terms of background blur. It still gives a very nice quality to its blur, but there is less swirl because you're looking only through the central part of the lens and the swirl tends to happen nearer to the edges. So it does lose a little bit of the light's magic. Much of this lens's charm happens in the bokeh at the edges and of course you don't see the edges on a small sense of body. However, Despite that, that said, it still gives very beautiful, very, very nice images with a quality that I think is unmatched by any other lens. Next up, we've got a 200mm equivalent. That's the Zuiko f2.8 100mm. And again, this is a Zuiko lens, but any 100mm lens you use that has roughly the same maximum aperture is going to give you broadly similar results. This lens gives you plenty of reach. It's really good for incognito street photography because it's better to get your subjects as candidly as you can. When people feel that they're being photographed, they'll suddenly tighten up, they'll become reluctant, they'll become awkward and embarrassed. And usually you can't get the kind of shot that you want. With this lens, you can. It's a very small lens, so your camera doesn't become cumbersome, even with an adapter. Maximum aperture is f2.8, so it has an equivalent maximum aperture when used on micro four thirds of f4. The effective close focusing distance is 50 centimeters when mounted on a micro four thirds body. So you really can get very close indeed to your subjects. Of course, with this lens, with an effective 200 mil length, you don't need to be physically close to your subjects. That's the advantage a little bit of reach has. It renders colors really beautifully. This is a great lens for color rendition. It's a low contrast lens, but personally, I really like the low contrast look. If you're not too keen on it, best thing is to use a hood on this one because it doesn't seem to like shooting into the light and it very easily gets washed out. It has a very soft background blur, very, very soft indeed. And on full frame and micro four thirds, it will give you bubbles from point light sources in the background. But on micro four thirds, because you're only looking through the central portion of the lens and you're effectively using half of the lens surface, those bubbles become larger and less numerous. So it doesn't give you quite the same effect that it does on full frame. Nevertheless, the images it makes are very, very pleasing indeed. Very soft blur, a very sharp lens, a really nice piece of kit and a very useful 200 millimeter equivalent for a micro four thirds body. 
The final lens I tested on the micro four thirds body is this beast, the Onar mirror lens, which on full frame has a focal length of 300 millimeters and on micro four thirds has an equivalent focal length of 600 millimeters. That is one massive reach. It's almost like a telescope. And because of that, it's absolutely fantastic for candid street shots. It's a very low contrast lens if you're shooting into the light. It really becomes washed out very, very easily indeed. If you're not shooting into the light, then the contrast is stronger and you can actually get some fairly contrasty images out of it. It's very sharp indeed and it separates the subject from the background even when the subject is really distant. Like all mirror lenses, this one has a very jittery, very nervous bokeh. But there are less donuts in the frame because you're looking only through the central portion of the lens, so they're less distracting. This is a fantastic lens for candid street shots. Subjects are not intimidated because you're further away from them and people are more natural and you can get much nicer shots. It's very small and light, it's not a huge lens by any means and when you put it on your micro four thirds body it's reasonably small. It's got a fixed aperture of f5.6 so on a micro four thirds body that's equivalent to f11. However, because it's a very long lens you still get loads and loads of back and foreground blur and some very good subject separation. Its minimum focus distance on full frame is two and a half meters. So on a micro four thirds body that becomes 1.25 meters. Although because it's such a long lens on these bodies, I can't see myself ever needing to use that 1.25 meter minimum. This is an unconventional lens. It was a cheap alternative to lenses with glass elements in its day. It's still that now. And for me anyway, it makes some really strong images and I do very much like this lens. So that's it from me for now. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. I do hope you've found it useful. Please do like and subscribe. The more subscribers and likes we get, the easier it is for me to keep making these videos. So that's all from me for now, and I will see you next time for more Xenography. Thanks for watching.